Okay, so this is my Yugo M70 <clears throat> B1 uh, fixed stock front trunnion. And because I've been waiting quite a while for a receiver flat, um, I kept dinking around with this and I might have messed it up. But what I wanted to show you was A, um, this is what I practice my rivets on. And I will say, I've gotten pretty good at the rivets. Um, obviously, there's no receiver on here, but you can see that uh, with a little um, divoted anvil, well, basically a little flat piece of quarter inch uh, steel, um, you make a little dimple in it, and then you use your bolt cutters. And it, uh, I have practiced a lot. A lot and I bought a pack of 300 rivets from Granger but uh, if you do it right let's see if I can get it to focus if you do it right your rivet should come out sitting perfectly flat with a perfectly domed head there you go um, that nick is from whacking it with a file the uh, anvil I guess I pretty much whacked all of them but anyway another thing I wanted to show you is um, so this little ear right here that this is the magwell area the magazine clips into there um, my whole thing broke off like that um, so I welded I basically just built up with weld this whole area right here is just welding that I built up so I crushed a rivet through it to see how it would hold up and uh, as you can see, see the back of the river there. Uh, as you can see, it, it cracked it, and the reason is is because of the heat treating. Um, these are these are hardened. Obviously, this this piece right here takes about forty thousand pounds of pressure. When that bullet fires, there's about forty thousand pounds per inch. I want to say is what I read um, of pressure, and so you kind of want it to function right. You know, I I like my limbs, so. Um, Look at my nasty owie on my thumb there. So anyway, this is what happens when you don't heat treat and you try to weld your trunnion. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, literally this whole area is built up on weld. I just kept tacking it with the MIG welder over and over and over again until it built that area and then I drilled a hole. I'm going to do that again, except more thorough. See those little holes and imperfections? I'm going to actually like really lay some, some metal down there, do the same thing again, drill a hole but um, I'm not going to be able to get away from heat treating it. So what I'm going to do is the same thing I did with the uh, with the uh, receiver. Um, when you heat treat, I'm going to heat this area to a glowing orange yellow uh, with a map torch, like till it's red, red, red hot. And then uh, I'm going to drop it in oil, motor oil, and that will uh, that will that will uh, get it extremely hard but what I did is obviously when I'm welding it's turning bright orange and I didn't do that and so it got very hard and brittle because what happens is after uh, after you heat treat it like that you need to uh, temper it or normalize it anneal it whatever you want to call it um, and to do that um, you know I've, I've done the brake fluid thing before you pour uh, brake fluid on something a little tiny bit of lacquer thinner just to get it going and then light it on fire it'll burn uh, for about 30 minutes Oop. it'll burn for about 30 minutes and uh, it, they say it burns at exactly 700 degrees I've done that with the rails um, with this one what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, after heat treating it I'm gonna throw it in the oven on a 550 they say that if uh, you throw it in the oven for about 550 degrees, God, I can't get this thing to focus, uh, 550 degrees, that will uh, bring it back down and anneal it. Because when you first heat, heat treat it, it's just way too hard and, and brittle, obviously. I, I squashed this rivet and it just snapped. So um, this was just practice, obviously. That wasn't going to be my final version. You can see it's kind of choppy. And plus, the magwell, the little right there isn't shaped out over here I said it was just practice so I'm gonna try it again um, try to make it perfect heat treat it and then um, 
do a couple more crushed rivets on it before I attempt to put it in a receiver. Um, if I can get it heat treated and I believe this thing is solid, um, you know, get sandblasted and put on the put on the rifle. Well, a little part of it might be sandblasted, but most of it's covered up. But um, I just wanted to show a couple things. One is how good I've got at the rivets. Those are pretty damn close to perfect. See, they always lean to one side because of the bolt cutter crushers. But uh, they lay nice and flat. So I wanted to show off my mad riveting skills. Yo. And, uh, and then also show what happens when you start messing with the uh, trunnion and welding without heat treating. You will get brittle ass metal that cracks. So, ladies and gentlemen... If you weld your your uh, trunnion, make sure you heat treat that. But uh, on another note, let's see if you can get that. That's what your rivets should look like inside of there. See that bad boy? Nice and flat, and it clears the the barrel. I haven't thoroughly checked it yet, but. Let's see. There we go. See, the barrel's got to slide in there and not hit that rivet. So, you got to make sure it doesn't interfere. Same way over here. That rivet back there, nice and flat. So, anyway, if you weld it, make sure you heat treat it because I got lucky this happened while I didn't have the receiver on. But if you had the receiver on, you might not even know that it cracked like that. And one day you're shooting and your shit blows up in your face. So pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. My screw-ups can be your successes. Anyway, just uh, something interesting to show you. So along goes the Yugo M70 build. Let you know if I ever get this thing done. I'm starting to wonder if this trunnion is just a little too beat to work. But anyway, thanks. Thanks. <laughs>